Hello and welcome to SideQuest. The latest. <laughs> the latest. Side quest. The greatest. <laughs> the, li- the latest SideQuest. The but, newest. The most the, recent. The episode after the last episode, but before the next episode. <laughs> yep. That's true. And we sure have done a lot of them. Today's episode. Right now. That's right. <laughs> Let's all take a moment of silence for the last episode, <laughs> which is no longer the current episode. <laughs> How's everybody? How are you guys doing? How's your weekend? Pretty solid. Yeah. Good. A Starfield? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? All Starfield. Now, Fran is all in on Starfield all, all the time. I have no choice. Living that space. What do you mean you have no choice? It's too deep. You're in too deep. deep. Yeah. It won't let you go. It literally is that. <laughs> Todd yeah. Howard's got you by the gonads. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it could be a video game of its own. Like grab by the ghoulies, you know? Grab by the gonads. Howard's got you by the gonads. <laughs> 2024 simulator <laughs> something like that so are you like in the end game have you beaten like the story are you no you haven't beaten the story how what's your hour count like? uh i don't know if you, you do you want to get into any starfield are you sure yeah, yeah i definitely want to get into <laughs> starfield well, i'll try to be short on um well so just for example what's happening in starfield like i've, I've intentionally just let it kind of draw me wherever i like to as i always put it let the game present itself to me and just, mm, yeah, I think yeah. this is going to be fun. I'm going to do it. I, under the pressure of like, there's so many games to play. It's easy to be like, I got to mainline this and get out of the next one. Respect to those people who are organized and actually enjoy that and have no regrets. Can't do that. I'm always like, yeah. Ooh, Ooh, that sounds fun over here. And I want to see like, cause that's the game, you know, uh, you explore it. So anyway, Saturday made the mistake of like, I had tinkered with outpost building. I'm like, all right, I'm going to figure some stuff out, you know, because I started to get a few more leveling points. And then it was like Saturday night. Oh, man, I, I think I only had gained a level over like four hours. So <laughs> no XP. And I'm staring at my menus, you know, like, holy crap. Like, OK, I want to build a fabricator that makes this thing. And then to do that, there's like um iron and aluminum that goes into this but then i'm like okay there's another generator that does this thing and i'm like well i want to set up on a few planets and anyway then i'm like explore the star system and see which planets have these combinations of element mm-hmm. <laughs> elemental materials oh man and then i'm like Kat is telling us you made a spreadsheet oh. no i did not make a spreadsheet no okay. but i constantly <laughs> oh, i have joked at disappointed this <laughs> joked oh it's coming i wouldn't make a spreadsheet <laughs> i would make a trello this game is, is if you know what Trello is, it's like an okay. organizational online tool that anybody can use to like organize, like, what do I got to get done? What do I got to do? And what categories if you want? Um, anyway, that makes the game sound very unfun. But I, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm amazed, of course. So I, I wouldn't say that I want to necessarily like get super deep into outpost building. And um, it's just that I didn't know. And then I kind of got drawn into like well how do you figure this stuff out that's what i'm always in gaming is always on my mind i'm like how does sort of the general player like come into this and figure it out and honestly the game it's it's one of its weaknesses like it's just baffling it's got a help menu that's only so helpful it amazes me that as a game that's designed all around questing doesn't really have tutorial quests for some like super basic stuff they full-on either decided, well, it's an RPG, figure it out, Google it, you know, or maybe it just wasn't a priority, you know, versus making all these romantic entanglements in Mm. the quests and whatnot, so. Entanglements. Can you entangle a terraformer, whatever their name is? Mm. Terra. The robots? Terra, the alien (laughs) monster guy. I don't even know what the alien monster guy is. So. They teach you about it in the museum, Fran. You ever been to the museum? I've been to the Emporium, if that's what you mean. <laughs> uh, there are, yeah, there is like something else going on that I've I've intersected with. But anyway, that Aliens. was Saturday. Then I did more main quests and stuff last night, and that was more enjoyable. Um, something that is really fun is yeah, getting um, your research done. <laughs> I'm making this sound really boring. You get your research <laughs> done at the table, and you use all your materials. But then it allows you to like upgrade mm-hmm. mods on the guns and it really is amazing like all the different guns you can pick up and mod out um and it's gonna take a long time to make like a really good gun so are you uh, talking about like a gun you use first person mode or a gun you use on the ship uh first person mode or you know you can always play in third person but um yeah but both but no this is specifically man the amount of gun types 
Um, and then the ways that you can kind of mod them for feel, you know, like on, I have like a sniper rifle that I have a suppressor on now and it's got like a heat signature scope that can like, if you wait a sec, it can see three people through walls and, but you can mod in so many different ways. Um, so we'll see how that feels in the long game, but, uh, but I am liking that. It's really hard to say in terms of as a whole still, as much as I've played probably 40 ish hours, you know, do I like the game as a whole, you know, because there's so much that I'm still exploring. And uh, the last, you know, note I'll leave it on is I'm constantly asking myself, like, is this game, if you allow yourself to do that, because they've allowed you to do it, mm. does it just get to be so overwhelming that you're like, ah, this is either going to take forever and I don't have the time or I've gotten to the point where I'm like, all right, you know, what? I just need to finish it. And how do I feel mm. about all that? So we'll see. Um yeah, actually, maybe the last, last thing on that is it really feels to me like if you play it like this and don't just main quest it with a few side quests, it's really meant to be played like months and maybe the next year, you know, in terms of like there's yeah. so much to do. I've, so. I've read like, and I don't know anything about why, and I'm not sure I want to know why, is that the new game plus too is like crazy, crazy, like butt cheeks crazy. Yeah, a lot of people. Have to, I, I know spoilers, right? I don't right. want to know. They, yeah. There was a lot of talk about finish the main campaign. It, you definitely want to finish it right away. And then some people were like, well, maybe not right away. Yeah. So initially, everyone was like, just beeline the main campaign, trust me, and then New Game Plus start doing everything. And then shortly after that, everyone was like, no, don't do that because you're going to actually lock yourself out of some things i don't know what but mm. they're like just just do the side quest play it at your leisure and just understand that new game plus has some good stuff in it yeah and now now i'm hearing people on new game like plus fives so plus 10 yeah what? You can get through, like, on plus 10 what are these people don't Crazy. these people yeah, have like be families <laughs> <laughs> you know they do they're posting about it online uh yeah my guess is once you you know you're that powerful you can like zoom through skip the dialogue um, oh and yeah then, that's like, true just power through the main quest wow that's yeah, if incredible you're just trying to like speed through the main quest when you get to a certain amount of new game pluses just to see what the next one's like I'm sure it's not too bad it's just that but he, goth has 80 hours so yeah 80 it's, hours um, in two weeks Dang. That makes yeah, sense. So there he streams full time, he, so that makes about sense. Yeah, but see, that's what's interesting. I'm probably let's say forty hours in. I always play the games like this, but I'm like level, you know, twenty one. Uh, who knows? Like I've barely made any progress. But again, you know, intentionally, I like to play that way because that's that's what the game did to me. In other words, like that's where I'm at with it. Let's see where it takes me. But it look, it's a good game, you know, for sure. Um, bug wise, I've definitely witnessed lots of like weird character like shaking and intersecting bugs and falling through force but none of it has actually impacted the gameplay except for one thing one time somebody walked through an airlock Ooh. so like with their gun i was That's going a into a battle That's and a they just like ghost. walked through and were like <laughs> i was like what the frick i didn't even open the door yet but like minor i mean i killed them right away so it didn't really like piss me off completely or anything but that that you know you can't have happen too often <laughs> yeah but after 40 hours other than the usual you know you hear about it a lot right like well bethesda glitches it's a buggy game and everybody talks about it well they but have been buggy games <laughs> totally yeah but yeah. what does it really mean and on it most of it's like funny and weird you know somebody's eyes rolling back in their head when the camera spins on them and you got to like reload it but none of it has affected gameplay except for that there might have been like a, something else super minor but none of it's been truly like a game breaker like i gotta reload my save or something i got a question or you for ruined you. my mission just kind of like a side topic but i want i'd like to come back do you quest, only you play this game on stream do you play it at all like off stream only on stream because I play everything on stream just for like, I don't have the time to be quite honest. Diablo is actually one of the only things that I don't actually play it off stream. It's that it has like a world boss that pops up like every four hours. So I might pop on and just get it done. Um, but yeah, basically I don't have time. I would worry as well. Like if I pop in to like build a ship off stream, I mean, there goes like, you know, two hours probably with the type of game that it is. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I play it all on stream. Yeah, I, I always struggle with that because, like, when I get really excited about a game, like, I just want to keep playing it, but I can't necessarily stream all the time, right? Like, sometimes my life forces me to be in the living room sharing 
my time with you know my wife and my kids yeah. so but i'll still play video games while i'm in there it's just that you know it's more social than being here in the office and streaming totally i wish i could do that those days are gone right now i mean part of it is the necessity to stream whenever i can sure. you know yeah. like as we out here trying to make it as a content creator just kind of got to do it but um yeah i haven't played in front of my tv in a long long time sadly but i love streaming thankfully so it's all good I haven't had any time to play since the last podcast. And I'm like, I want to get back to it. But it also is, it's a little telling to me that I haven't, like, figured out a time to jump back in. You know what I mean? Like, what? Have you played any games? Like, in other words, was there a reason why you've avoided well, this? Just, or you just I've just no been very busy. Yeah, very busy, like, with, like, life stuff. So I right. just, I have played a little bit of games, but it's been, like, on the Nintendo Switch, like, literally yeah, for, like, a fast, few minutes. Yeah, yeah. Social. Yeah. So, so there's nothing holding you back from a gameplay perspective of why you wouldn't log in right now. No, but like, like if, if you know this what was, they say, what's if that? he could, he would. Yeah. If, <laughs> if but if this was Elden Ring, he would. like I would have just like, nah, I'm not coming to the pool party. I'm playing Elden Ring. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm too busy. I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> I don't know. So it's a little concerning. It's like, it's like almost there for me, but you know, yeah, you, you, I think I recalled you played like five or six hours or something. Yeah, and that's kind of where I'm at still. So I'd like to like get deep into it and like I, I, yeah, uncover I can't some wait of the to secrets. He, to hear more. Um, yeah. Watts, I don't think you played anymore, right? No, I have not. I've moved on. What have you Starfield moved on Starfield is to? behind me. Um, well, so it was like I wanted to play Destiny because, again, Lies of P is coming out and I'm not going to be playing any Destiny, maybe a little bit. Um, and then I checked out Synced, which we can talk about. And then I'm playing Eternites tomorrow, which I'm really excited about. Uh, and I was just kind of getting, I, the problem with these games is I'm having a lot of fun. I'm having a good time. And then actually when I start doing the quests, I get bored mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, right. I have a whole main quest to get through. And I think the main quest is, uh, not great from what I, what I've experienced and also what I've watched other people do. Um, so yeah, I think think I'm just good on Starfield. I don't think it's a bad game. I think it's a, a solid game. I do think it's a little unfortunate that Bethesda hasn't really added to their formula in 10 years. It feels like I'm playing a 10-year-old game in a lot mm -hmm. of ways. And I'm not asking for them to like break the mold of all video games, but you know, maybe maybe a little bit <laughs> of uh, I don't know, new new stuff, new things. Yeah. For Bethesda yeah, I mean, it's, personally. It, it's interesting. I described it last night as like, for me, what you're describing when I see it, like that part is the main sidewalk of like, that's the main quest, the side quest. Yeah, it is like, it's Fallout 4 in space. But to me, when you look at the shipbuilding, exploring the solar system, and then you get into like now mineral mining and all, if you add all that, if you get into those things that they, they have, and the ship battles, they've added. But not everybody wants to do those things and arguably like some of those things just aren't for everybody and it's not part of the main vibe you know yeah so um, I, that's what i've been saying really is that i i think it's a, i don't think it's a bad game at all um i just don't think there's really enough there for me to choose it over other things it's so like we said like so for me i'd say it's like a seven out of ten video game for me personally and it's like do we have space for seven out of ten video games in 2023 I go, yeah. <laughs> probably not. I probably don't. Yeah, it's always, it, that's an interesting way to put it. I'm, um, I'm always down for whatever variety of score, you know, meaning I'll just play whatever. Um, like, in other words, if Anthem had come out this year, I always use that example as like, I gave it a 6.8. I did a review of it for my personal channel way back, but. It's a um, low score for but, a gem like Anthem. <laughs> but I said it was okay, bore on good, but it had some problems. Like, hey, but I really enjoyed, you know, checking it out. Can't wait for um, Anthem it had potential. Really looking forward to it. <laughs> if only. <laughs> but I mean, I'm, I'm always down for a great of things. But it is an interesting way to put it. It's like, yeah, but there's all these, like, nines and tens. Like, why aren't you playing Day of the Diver? And you should have played Dredge. And I don't know what Dredge got, but Sea of Stars and all this. Baldur's Gate 3. There's just too much to play. But I'm, I there's mean, I'm more than them. happy to play. Like, yeah, I don't know what I give starfield yet at this point i gotta play it through but it's yeah, definitely sure. uh anywhere between yeah a seven to a, a high nine for all i know but i i definitely yeah. think it's a good game and we'll see where it goes but but yeah too much going on out there in terms of games 
Which is great because if, if you're, no matter what kind of gamer you are, you can pick and choose the games that are you're like really into. Yeah. You don't have to play a game that you're like, oh, you know, it's pretty good. I'm having like an okay time. You can pick the one that you're obsessed with, which is why this year is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And we got to get away from the, I, I mean, the plates keep stacking up, if you will, but um, you, we got to get away from the idea that like you have to play a game within the year that it released. Like, who cares? Is, you know, technology can affect that, but within years at least, like many of you haven't played Returnal or, you know, I'm thinking of PlayStation games apparently, but like it was because um, the first Horizon I actually played like three or four years after release when it came to PC. And it was the best thing I did because it ran at like 60 frames, looked beautiful, and I was like, this game's amazing and um, had a killer experience with it. So and I still just... never played the Dark Dark Souls stuff. Going to really enjoy that once i finally do like even though they're old games they just released a patch for uh star wars jedi survivor and they did apparently yeah. it's like technically just fixed at this point like 60 oh, fps in performance mode like just running good which is great news because that game kind of launched in a rough state yeah so Are you, you know just goes to show it is a good idea to kind of hold off a little bit when you're playing a game so generally you're talking about product with Within the last week, the September 5th patch, I think I've seen. That's the one yeah, you're referencing? Yeah, just came out. Yeah, I think oh. it just came out. Yeah, well, I asked this because I continually have tested on my PC because mine is, you know, especially when I'm streaming, but it had faced like that, you know, texture stutter and whatnot. Um, and so, yeah, I'm like, I can't play this game. It's too cool of a game to be playing like this that I said, yeah, I just wait so I keep checking in. So I haven't checked this one yet. Nice. Um, and this is without Ray Tracer, so I'm excited. But I will say the one before September 5th even, looks like the July 18th patch, was already, it was seemingly, I'm only logging in, you know, for four minutes at a time, so it wasn't a good test. But it was already running better, so I actually I can't wait to see this. And then obviously on console as well. But um, pro tip right there, oh, I'm excited to check it out. See, I'm glad I waited. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to play it for four years, like I said, but, you know. It's... <laughs> I don't know. I really wanted to play this when it came out because I enjoyed the first one so much. And then, like, right off the bat, like, the, the the news was pretty grim on performance. So I was like, well, you know, there's so much to play this year. I'll just kind of hold off on this one. Now it seems like it's time to jump in. Yeah, there you go. Right after Pikmin, right? Right after Pikmin. I don't own this game yet, though. <laughs> <laughs> good he owns pikman keep it that way that's true mm -hmm. I do are you like pikman. me and you you forgot you have an ea pro subscription or whatever it is i don't I, think i do have one of those I almost bought a do you have game of pass Avia. doesn't it come no, with? no i canceled game pass game? Oh. that only comes with the base uh, there's that's oh. what's confusing it, EA, it is confusing whatever. it comes with some ea games but it doesn't come with the high-end ones that's like 99 that's very confusing. a year i think but um but anyway, I legit, I don't know if I forgot if I mentioned, I almost bought Immortals of Avium to check it out. And again, I like supporting new IP. And, and I was like, I just totally forgot. I think it was maybe even Watts mentioning what you just did about Game Pass. So when I had checked it, I was like, oh, no, wait, but I actually even have the official annual EA one. Um, so remember, if you've got it, you might have Star Wars Jedi. Yep. Yep. I played, uh, I played Synced on Friday. Oh yeah, what's that? Synced is a co-op PVE and PVP game, kind of sci-fi, and it's uh, it's multiplayer. It, it will be cross-play when it comes to consoles, but currently it's just on Steam and Epic. Um, and you essentially, in the, the PVE side, you're fighting like hordes of enemies. And then in the PVP, it's, uh, I guess, you're collecting resources and fighting other players for those resources. Um, but it's it's kind of cool. I didn't know what to expect going in. But essentially, you, you pick a character and they all have unique abilities. And then there's also like these, what do you call them? I think they're called nanos. But they're like these AI guys that you put in your arm and you can shoot them at people and they have like their own abilities. They There's a bunch of different ones that specialize in different things. And uh, they all have like different leaps that you can do, which are really cool. One of them you like surf on a shield. The other one you like fly through the sky. Very cool. Um, 
And it kind of plays out like a roguelike in the PvE mm -hmm. section because you can run around, around and find different guns. There's these stations that you can use currency to pick different perks. And this is perks for you and also for your nano guy. Um, and yeah, it, the shooting feels good. It's third person, but you can scope in and kind of be in first person. And yeah, it kind of impressed me because it's it's just silly fun that's free. It seems like the monetization is pretty fair from what I could tell. They're not like going crazy with, with the prices and the systems. So I think I will be playing it a little bit more. Nice. Yep. Because it's pretty fun. It's got a nice yeah, look was... to it. Yeah. Yeah, I I think it was out in beta, and I mentioned I played a little bit of it back yeah. then. Um, and yeah, I was surprised. I was like, okay, it kind of... I felt like it had, yeah, a mix of this, like, yeah, Anthem, Division, Destiny, Inspiration um, in this third-person shooting environment. So I was like, yeah, it seems okay. And, yeah, it was free-to-play. That was So that was my only thing is, like, seeing how the free-to-play really works and mm. how much they're drawing you in. Um, yeah, it's um, the free-to-play it stuff is not bad at all. They have a battle pass, of course, so you can sign up for that. They also do some something similar to Genshin where you can pay for this like 30 day thing that just gives you rewards every day. Those tend to be super fair in both in Genshin and any game that has that in it. It's like you're paying less money and getting a lot more rewards because you're essentially waiting for the rewards is happening throughout the month. So those tend to be super fair. Uh, the prices on skins seem pretty good. You can uh, you can earn currency in the game to buy new characters and the skins as well. And I was getting that at a pretty good rate and this is release. It's not like a beta anymore. It's actually out. So the experience that I'm having is the final one, unless they adjust it. But yeah, I was getting I was getting a good amount of free currency to be able to purchase uh, whatever I wanted. Hmm. Are these like right aliens that have come to Earth? What, what who are the bad guys here? They're I think they're also nanos. I don't know. I didn't pay a lot of attention to the story. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> and it was like, I want to go in and shoot things. It's a roguelike. I want to go experience all of the upgrades. Let's go have fun. I only played for three hours so far. So, is it create a character or do you pick from like six? You pick from okay. from a group. Yeah. Ah, I kind of like, like this. Is it classes? Classes, yeah, yeah. Ish. Yeah. This looks like it'd be fun to play with friends. Definitely, yeah. I because it's, it's free. Um, like Let's people it, just yeah. in my community just downloaded it and we hopped in together and everyone had a good time. So, yeah, that's how I could kind of gauge how fun of a time it is. Is if people are jumping in with me and they're like, I actually had a good time with that. I'm gonna play some more. But yeah, it was good. I think it is a solid thing to try out for free if you are into, like you said, Division, Destiny, any of those kind of games. I think you'll dig it. Cool. Nice. So I was reading an interesting article earlier today. This is about uh, Nintendo Joy-Cons. You know how the Nintendo Joy-Cons have had this, like, stick drift issue for, I don't know, when did the Switch come out? In, like, 1982? 2017. Right. That was close. <laughs> <laughs> so the problem, Feels with, like it. the problem with them, right, is that, like, they, you know, they get kind of worn out, and then, like, it, you turn on your Switch, you and they just will like constantly like drift one way or another. And there's been like numerous fix to these. A lot of people claim that these hall effect uh, sensors are like the fix where it's all magnets. Uh, and like, you know, so you're not, you're not, you're not using potentiometers or whatever, or things that'll wear out. The magnets will just kind of stay the same, but they just patented Nintendo just patented this. Like, oh, let me, let me get the name of this Ooh, smart wow, fluid. Smart okay. fluid joysticks. Uh, so it'll have like this magnetic fluid inside the joystick. And it's a little unclear if this is going to be to uh, eliminate drift in joysticks, which again, like there's already a solution for with all effect joysticks, which aren't that expensive. You can actually swap your, uh, your joysticks out in a uh, switch or a joy con now by just buying some. Or if there may be some force feedback use for this, where mm. by by applying electricity to the smart fluid, you can, you can adjust. Force it to drift. You can, or you can push back on the user's thumb. So, like, a, imagine like you're going around a corner in like a racing game, and when your car starts to like understeer or oversteer, you can feel your 
joystick like vibrating under your thumb. Interesting. Yeah, how much can you control those haptics or whatever you would call it in this case? Yeah, I don't know. And again, like that, maybe, maybe not, right? Like it could just be like, hey, Nintendo's sick of replacing joysticks on uh, Switch controllers. They got a new controller coming out soon and they're looking at this technology. Is there, or this could just be pie in the sky, right? They could just, you know, yeah. companies patent yeah, shit all the time that, all that the never time. comes to market, right? Yeah, they have tons of patents that have never resulted in things um, yeah. but wait yeah is that the is that speculation that it's for the next switch um, it's it's just a pad <laughs> the speculation right. it you're could saying be, who knows you yeah it could it be for the want, next yeah. switch it could be you know they, they could never use this yeah. technology um it could be, could be just for, for uh joysticks that don't yeah it could be for a new game boy it could be for joysticks that just don't drift over time so they're not constantly dealing with warranty issues or right. it could be this new, like, you know, uh, force feedback kind of immersive technology, similar to the sticks on the PlayStation 5 controller. Not the sticks, right. the triggers on the PlayStation 5 controller that kind of push back at you. It's kind of neat, right? Like, on games that use that, it's pretty cool. And it's something that Definitely. I feel like it, it was wildly popular and then kind of, like, fell out of favor. Like, there's still some, like steering wheels still use it like you oh, know I big see. like flight hota systems still use it but it's not like i don't know it's well you I, I mean you bring up a good point that i didn't think about i mean yeah playstation's got full on haptics you know motor based right i mm -hmm. believe like vibration yeah. all over in various areas of the controller plus the trigger push and pull that's i really like like when you use a bow in horizon or whatever like it can be you can have, have be really difficult as you pull it back and you really feel it it's awesome to see how far haptics have come, and you can always turn it off if you want. I love that stuff, but I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. the The analog sticks don't do anything, yeah, uh, like they would in a steering wheel, right? Yeah, right. there's no push and pull. So if you could get all of that, you know, that could be a lot of fun for certain things. So yeah, like Mario Kart, and it, yeah, it can be fun. Like and and like you said, you can just turn it off if you don't like it, or you know, because a lot of a lot of gamers prefer like well. If this is going to affect performance in any way, I don't want it. But some gamers want, are like, well, if this makes me immersion. feel like more like I'm driving Mario's Kart and that immerses me more into the world of Mario Kart. Yeah. Or even then... like, dude, Tears of the Kingdom, I could even imagine with picking up and pulling all this stuff around. Like, yeah. imagine it's like really tough to pick up some stuff. Yeah, like, like if, oh, it, if you pick up a heavier item, maybe it's harder to push the stick. Or when it drops, you can feel it like. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And just. And then you just need developers to make It'd their entire fun. game around it. Well, the only games yeah. you play on Nintendo Switch are Nintendo games anyway, so. Should One of the things <laughs> to certify, I'm gonna force you to put something in there to support it. Right. But yeah, I mean, look, Nintendo is uh, famously known for controller um, patents, and you know, since the de dawn of video game time, and they're super protective about it, but they've done some really cool things. I mean, for the longest time, right, the analog stick alone, um, I forget how that patent worked, but that was, I'm pretty sure it was highly contested, um, from them, you know, in terms oh, of, oh, really? Maybe I didn't it was know the that. Maybe it was the D pad, the or D pad maybe definitely both. was like that. That maybe I was thinking of the D pad as it went to the analog. It's, that's how long it's been. That shape of D pad it. was. I mean, but yeah, the D pad and, but just even button layouts. And I mean, they've been very protective of all that. So what I also would be more curious about too, it could be even for like a pro switch to controller or whatever it's going to be and having, being able to come out the gate and not only have an accompanying, accompanying controller, but really like a signature in the same way that we have, you know, I, I mean, maybe I'm wrong in this. I don't feel like the switch controllers are that like the switch pro controllers is it's like, it's all right. But there's nothing yeah, like right. GameCube did and N64 and, um, I mean, the Wiimote, I guess. But, they're, like, really, it just, like, it was a decent, it's almost like an Xbox controller. So, um, I think yeah, Xbox it'd be interesting if they kinda, is better, honestly. Yeah, I mean, some people, uh, oh, you mean then the Pro. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, especially, like, the Elite Series stuff. But, oh, yeah. But, no yeah, like, if you think about it, they've been so focused on the actual handheld hardware that the accompanying pro controller you could argue like it hasn't really seen as much of an advancement from them so mm -hmm. they got me thinking maybe they're going to do a bit more with that but uh exciting yeah it's i just want that to switch too. Gonna come. i do too i, I can't wait whatever to... it's gonna be when do you think all right 
when do you think they're going to unveil the Switch 2? Like, just show it. Like, unveil? Yeah. I do feel like they'll do it in Q1, by Q1 of yeah. next year. Oh, man. To, to let us know and let investors know in particular. Because their fiscal year starts April 1st. And this is what, again, we know about the next Switch. It's like they said it's not no new hardware until in this fiscal year, which means before April 1st of next year. So we already right. know that. And they they didn't say whether or not they'd talk about it, um, but it would make sense usually, and that's how what they did with the switch. I think they had a December or something, right? Reveal and then yeah, they it was did very like close showing. to launch. Yeah, yeah. Then they did another showing close to launch with more of the games and stuff. But uh, maybe I mean that would be the most logical is they would do the same thing at the end of the year, um, a little tease or reveal, and then you know, something Q1. But I actually think mo it's going to fall all into Q1. And I say that because of just the way things have gone. They've waited forever. Clearly, they're waiting on something. Um, there's there's commentary about the supply lines, right? They want to be sure they have enough to launch so they can just sell a ton. That's great for their, in, you know, just position period. But, like, investors love that, right? If you can go yeah. out and sell, like, 5 million in an instant instead of it uh, not being available. Yeah. But then there's been some re recent rumors um, that they started to show it at Gamescom, you know, uh, behind closed doors. Oh, which have they? adds up. That that just came out after Gamescom over the last week or so. Interesting. Um, there, were, there were some rumors um, and sources. I think it was a couple folks, Eurogamer, maybe VGC, that said they heard the same thing. And that checks out. But normally it would be a very limited showing to a few group of folks you know um at big companies so yeah i mean look, either way the point is look, we know it's coming next summer probably or it could come in the spring but uh i'd say late spring or they're just gonna have to wait all the way till the end of the year i mean what do you guys think they're gonna do any inklings i know nothing about the switch Two or like the switch so <laughs> i can yeah. throw a date out <laughs> but <laughs> yeah you don't have any spidey uh, senses i haven't even thought about it yeah I haven't crossed my mind. I, I would love to see it personally, of course, in the spring and the late spring, whenever they can do yeah, it. Yeah, I'd love to see an time. announcement in... Spring would be good. ...this year and then a spring release. I'd love that. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Was it you, Briar, that said last time? Or I thought it was that you were like, yeah, I kind of want them to get it out the door. I like it when they do that before the holiday. Did you oh, yeah. Like yes, I definitely that? like that. So they're yeah. so that the, like the holiday rush and like the nerd rush are two different rushes. Right, so they like so <laughs> like all the hardcore gamers can get theirs at launch, and then the holiday rush they can get theirs as well, as opposed to the PlayStation or the Xbox when they release in oh. like November, and the rush is everybody, you know. But it's just about availability. For, For me, you? that's no. all I care about. I don't care about the investors. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, no, and I wasn't asking that. It was uh, more about com comp. I thought was it, you know, you don't like if it releases against everything else that releases in Q4. It sounds like it's mostly just about availability for you. Yes, yes. That's what, in the last few years, it's been so hard to get everything that that's my only yeah. concern. <laughs> it's like I don't want to totally. sit on and, a website you're right. like like spying a click. You know, any popular system has never been able to get it right. Um, I mean, there might be some rare older cases, but meaning they always sell out, they're not available, and now we're dealing with bots and AI and all this nonsense um, that yeah. we all have, um, mm. frankly, PTSD from it that, yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm like, yeah, at least give me six months of trying to get this thing, and then the holidays come when even more good games are coming out, and then at least you've sorted some stuff out that, you know, poor Santa Claus doesn't have to show up with an apology note. Yeah. I so, do um, like Watts's yeah. method, though. When the PS5 the came Watts. out and you went to GameStop, like, right away and Did. just ordered mm. in person at a GameStop. Yeah. I was like, that yeah. was smart because, like, not a lot of people are going to do that. You know, like people. Well, they were also they were only taking physical pre-orders at that time, yeah. so that makes it even more likely that you're going to actually manage to get one because it's like middle of the day. Yeah. I know not many people could just leave work to go to GameStop. Just drop everything. Um, gotta go. <laughs> just drop everything. Gotta go. Be right back. Yeah, but yeah, I just heard. I think people in chat were saying that they are taking it. They're doing physical pre-orders right now and i was like really so then i called them and i was like is this true and they said yes so then it was so quick that i managed to pre-order two 
when they we weren't actually allowed to pre-order two. So wow. they called me a little bit later and were like, uh, uh. yeah, we can't actually give you two. But then they threw in like a couple games just because, you know, it was nice. their mistake. Awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good reminder. What else is going on this week? Anything good? Third Nights coming out tomorrow. I can't wait. What game? What is? A Tur Nights. A Tur Nights. Oh, this is you the mentioned game, that last week. This is the game that I think Briar said looks right up your alley, and I was like, mm, I'm not that interested. And then <laughs> when we were doing our um, demo tries, I just tried out the demo, and it kind of blew me away. Really blew me away. It's uh, so yeah. It's the game where it's half kind of dating sim and like story, choose your own adventure, and half action RPG. And uh, I was just really impressed with one. The combat is genuinely good. Nice. And the characters are really funny. Like we were just sitting there playing this game on stream, and we're all just laughing. Like what? What did they just say? Um, and the voice acting is really great, both in English and Japanese. They've got some really incredible voice talent. And uh, yeah, I think it's just going to be a really freaking fun game. Because I playing, love the demo. So you're playing that, some Destiny this week still, and then Lies of P, is that the Lies schedule? Lies of P on Saturday. Yep. Saturday that That's releases? That's the schedule. Watts has got like one of those like digital counters up on the I don't need kitchen. it I know yeah. what I like <laughs> I know what I like and I know when it's coming out because it's just because like I don't care about cyberpunk and I'm not gonna be playing spider-man I'm there's a lot that I'm not playing so yeah, yeah. and plus very, this very week, you've got you've got time but um actually wait a minute Briar what's going on with Mortal Kombat Mortal Kombat like comes out on the 19th uh, yeah that's still eight days away Unless, is, is there an early there, there might be it, an we early talked about release, it. right? There is a early access. I don't know how early their access is. It yeah, is. I don't feel we the need. I thought to it was this week. I thought it's this weekend, early. Briar. I thought that's what I thought it might be today. early access the same day as Lies of P as well. It might be. It is officially September 14th. That's right. Okay. We talked about it. Oh, it's Thursday. So Thursday. are you going to check well, it out? Or? I'm not going to pay for early access for Mortal Kombat. Yeah. I'm not, I'll am i be completely honest. Yes. I'm not going to do that. It's one for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one, one point for the. We talked about it, I think, last week. Right? I'm, yeah. I mean, man. We did. Yep. Ugh. Early access. Make it stop. Yeah. Don't buy well, you it. Know, if you can wait. There's been a whole conversation recently as well about not just early access, but giving content creators extra, extra early access mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. stream the game or, you know, like make YouTube videos on the game. And people are now starting to have conversations about that of like, if, if, if a content creator, and we, we always have these kind of conversations, but if a content creator is giving the super early access, like two weeks early of Starfield, for example, or mm -hmm. however early it was, it was very early. Yeah, review. Um, are they able to give their honest thoughts while they're playing it? Because a lot of, if you get that early access, is based on the relationship that you have with the company. Because there were a lot of people who were turned away who were like, we're just not interested in working with you because of our personal relationship. Um, so, yeah, it might have turned upset at access journalism, right? Yeah, and it's uh, kind of like the rich get richer. Like, you're playing Starfield two weeks ahead of the general public, a week before early access. And just, just I think it's been an interesting conversation. It's in your financial it. interest to keep that relationship good, too, because... For right. the next Starfield or the next game that comes from Bethesda, like you want them to give you that early access again because you financially benefit from putting those videos out early, putting a review out early, putting how to guides out early, streaming it early. Yeah, the whole game. Yeah, so you bring up. Uh, I I think it's. Uh, so I had like a visceral reaction of like, what? I've reviewed games for years of uh, the early access doesn't matter, and then I was like. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Different setup, content creators. Yeah. Relationship, yeah. anything, any relationship stuff gets very tricky, very fast. And I would say that it's not just early access, but it's a good point. But there would be a laundry list of things. Um, it could be getting the key, period. Right. Yeah. I mean, just getting a key for free and a couple giveaways for your community. I mean, you're already into, wait, how did I disclose that? How do I make sure it doesn't affect me? Um, like for example, I, IGN, you know, had many, they have their standards and practices. You can go look, but, uh, you're allowed certain things, but one example would be, it's probably still the same. We had settled on like, look, you can only 
personally get given something up to the value of a game. So you can take a free copy of the game, but uh, you normally, uh, for reviewers, I can't remember if for, yeah, I think we didn't care like if the reviewer walked away with like a $60 copy because they were also getting paid, you know, like a full-time salary. It was money. Right. Yeah. But, but the point is you need stuff like that and content creators don't have those guardrails because they don't have the organization and the, they're not, yeah, it's not journalism usually. There are definitely some journalists who are content creators and it's really tricky. And uh, yeah, as you said it again, I sort of was like personal. I was like, what? It shouldn't matter. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute. Just having a conversation and getting access to even sometimes like talk to people at a company, li or every getting little flown thing. out, or even getting like those yeah. gift boxes that like have a all the above. you know a, like a giant so, galahorn in it or something. You know, like who knows? Like yeah. those all those things. Like maybe they influence yeah, you. Maybe they don't. So, I don't know. Would they influence me? I don't know. I, I right. can't even so, answer that question for my myself. Uh, never mind somebody yeah. else. Yeah, as as somebody who's been through a lot of that, <clears throat> but has not personally you know benefit benefited financially in a direct sense yet um because you know i'm not banging out there as a content creator with like a four bedroom house you know if i was then maybe i could okay well now my my relationships have changed but anyway i guess my point is someone who's been through it i'd say the disclosure stuff is super duper important for the audience and then they can make their judgment with that disclosure so as long as you do that that's step one but step two is you constantly have to check in with yourself and um yeah I, th I think you should be very wary it's easy to take free stuff but um when it does financially benefit you or otherwise on the other side though the... too mm -hmm. is you have you have the responsibility to your viewers if like they want you to review review a game like you want to get that done before the game comes out or as close to release as possible because like people are going to be making a decision to buy this game, right? Like, you, yeah. you know, they yeah. want to know how good Starfield is before they go and buy it. Yep. I think the, the conversation that was happening was more so that this is kind of a new thing with streaming and it being under an umbrella of access journalism. So of course, we're not saying it's journalism, but saying that people are just getting access to the thing because of their relationship with the company or whatever it may be, instead of it being given to everyone so you can get a wide array of opinions right away. You're only getting the opinions of those who have the mega super duper early access. And Isn't how that do just they get advertising that at that point? Like you're you're basically giving this game to streamers as an advertisement. It's marketing. Yeah. It's a well, marketing plan. Yeah. So well, yeah, but what I'm saying is that if you're only getting the opinions for like a week of people who have been given the early access, not everyone, not all the reviewers, the reviews aren't even out yet, then does that pose an issue to the consumer? The consumer because for that needs to take some shouldn't. responsibility here too, though. Like, but I'm just saying that for that week, you are getting potentially extremely biased opinions, and then when the game is officially out, then you start getting all of the non-access But see, but it opinions. should be no difference. So that's the only thing I would say. I mean, this is an awesome point, by the way. Like, I mean, It is. But my, my thing, what I said there was like, it doesn't matter that they get early access. Like it wouldn't matter if they get a free key. If they're doing their jobs and disclosing, it shouldn't. Meaning fundamentally, I got no problem with it. But are there problems out there with it? Oh, I betcha. And do you have to be super yeah. careful? Yeah. In fact, I can give you the personal example. Like I could have got um, a key for Starfield. Um, mm -hmm. I could have twisted their arm for the early access period just because I know people. I actually hooked somebody up in the community um, just with the contact to solidify their early access. Um, so I certainly had the opportunity, but I said, I'm just gonna, it was, part of it was my personal style. I'm like, I'm just gonna play it at launch. I got my game pass, I'll buy the thing, and then I can weigh in. And that way I don't have the burden of like, well, I, yeah, I, I benefited. Yeah. But my point yeah. is, I still would argue, even if I did, and I'm lucky that I've been doing it a long time. It doesn't matter. It's not going to affect my opinion. If I think the game sucks, you're going to know. It doesn't matter that I got early access. However, you're right, Watts. This, th what they're doing is very dangerous. And like, you, you, yeah. But um, I, I don't think it's just that single thing. I think if it's not early yeah. access, it's you got a free copy. And if it wasn't that, they sent you a t shirt. And it, they sent you the gift box, like where it doesn't end. And so you do, you should, Starfield you gotta gaming chair. That. 
Yeah, yeah. that's definitely like <laughs> the larger conversation that I think we've been having for a while. This kind of new conversation popped up specifically with the Starfield early access because it was so ahead of anything that was coming out. People were streaming this game like way ahead of time. And the opinions on that game was purely coming from those who have been given early access to Starfield. There were no other opinions out at that point. Yeah, that is a marketing um, exercise. As a consumer, you need to you need to understand that, that what you're looking at, right? Yeah, for sure. Reviews are like that in general, though. You know, like I mean, the review yeah. period was the two weeks before. They got the same thing to create their videos. So um, you should always know that reviews are just like those early opinions. But you're right that it's interesting that let's say an IGN review, like I said, like Dan Stapleton does not benefit from the two million views that right. IGN's video. Yeah, there's a, has there's no more of a disconnect, system, right? Which they never would. Oh, like, it's a, a huge yeah, disconnect. Like if, a if, very personal benefit. Yeah, if Fran gives a bad from. review to Starfield <laughs> in IGN, like that doesn't mean that you're you're not going to eat next month or like you're going to make less money no, next month, you at right? All. No. Unless and you're... They have to... In, but oh, with, with, with a streamer, like it very much is related to how much money you're going to make next month. Like you oh, get 100%. that early access, you're going to have more viewers, you're going to make more money. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it Maybe more clearly, it is a conflict of interest because of what you're identifying. Yeah. But it's the world we live in. It's the same as like if you – honestly, like I'll just draw it to something really simple. Um, I Well, I, in my case, as a content creator now, would love to cover Marathon, right? And so that's a relationship with Bungie and Destiny. So I might want to be careful that I don't piss them off in this course of destiny and final shape if I want to cover marathon, right? Right. There's people out there that exactly. are thinking about that every <laughs> – but I don't, I don't care because they know how it works and you should know and you got to disclose. But, like, you're 100% right that this exists and that's where maybe you were even getting at a briar. Like, the consumer, you the listener, the viewer, you got to be really on top of, like, what is the setup yeah. for your, the opinions you're getting. You know, you can't just trust that. I love this topic, saying, Watts. It's so yeah. fun to talk about. This. <laughs> it's so layered. It's super tricky. And again, at IGN, that's exactly why they have standards and practices. Like, Dan Stapleton doesn't care. There's even, there's walls within the company. And again, I haven't been there for, you know, it's been five years now. But um, you got you keep sales away from the editors. Um, you got to be careful of them hearing. For example, another one, right? If you... As Dan Stapleton heard, this is, this is an actual thing that happens at IGN. If Star, Starfield can buy IGN.com, the front page and the app and, and ads that roll before the videos, right? Right. So if you stumble over that meeting or what, and you're like, it's coming, all oh, my review's going up, then you are, Dan, thinking, crap, Starfield's running a huge campaign while I'm reviewing. Isn't this what happened to yeah. Jeff Gerstmann at uh, GameStop? It. It's related. It wasn't that he heard about it. and No, like he just gave, it was, it was it, like Army yeah. of Two or something, like yep. a horrible review, and, and they had just bought off. a huge ad buy, so they fired him. That's right. Kane and Lynch. So Kane and Lynch. That's they right. got pissed off and pulled their level, levers, as you know, as far as we know and have seen there, um, wow. to, um, yeah, basically in, uh, invoke punishment. And then I forget, yeah, if he had quit over it or did he... I can't remember now whether it was like let go and or quit over the situation, but it was like famously. Oh, it's hugely a, a problem. But point is they have those guardrails and you're right that content creators don't. Yeah. Unless you're big, in which case, by the way, if you're a big content creator that can do that and have a sales group, have uh, even a marketing person, a PR person that handles that handoff, then it becomes more layers of insulation. That you don't know, you know, but um, but you're right. At the end of the day, if you're collecting the paycheck for your your Starfield review directly, um, it's interesting though because a bad review, you could argue, well, that's going to do banging views. Right. So I it, don't care. It's almost more interesting <laughs> the streamers who get it early because they're not reviewing yeah, the game. But, right. They're just but even playing then, it, getting but maybe then, 10k extra viewers. Right. right? Yeah. But, yeah. making but a it, lot is, more money. it assumes that because they like it, they'll get more viewers. Therefore, they'll get more money and well, they want another copy. No, it, it assumes, assumes the, the early, early, early access is going to get them more viewers because there's only like five people who have that. So right, but my point was just that 
it assumes a glowy review, but there's nothing that forces them to have a glowy review of it. In that no, what what is what we're saying is that in order to get those ten thousand extra views for the next early access, do you want to just sit there on stream and go, "This game sucks, Bethesda, you're terrible"? Yeah, I right. don't know. You might second no. guess that. You might go, mm, "Well, the game is, you know, it's pretty good. I'm having kind of fun." <laughs> yeah. No, and I'm agreeing with I'm just saying it, it assumes under that lens that you do care about Starfield DLC and or Elder Scrolls in five years and or Xbox and um and you're right to assume that. But I'm also saying there's there's nothing that stops you from getting early access and being like, Don't like it, chat. This game's not for me. I'm gonna finish the main story and um they'll the ones that do their job well, they of course they give you another key, by the way. But um but yeah, a lot of people who haven't had those relationships don't know um although and there's probably some examples because i know watch you were alluding to some relationship stuff there it can happen when you have rocky relationships but it's never yeah. and it's never supposed to be about what you think of the game because then there should be an expose on that oh but, but it I is should... totally like a, a skill up didn't get a copy because you know he's always busted on uh bethesda so they, they didn't yeah. send him a copy early. His he review didn't go up. He a bunch of codes, yeah. yeah. He's, I know Mylan spoke to him about, you know, I want to review games. How can I do it? He's like, I still have to chase people down yeah. to oh, get yeah. a code. If And some a lot of the time, they don't give it to me. Because yeah. you see it all the time. I'm, I'm like always like psyched to see uh, Skillup's review on the day that the embargo goes up. And there goes his tweet. Like, I didn't get the early access code. I didn't get a code to review it. So it's going to be out, oh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Ash. It's for early access, it is still. Even for the the journalistic outlets, like it's the same thing. Like if they think they're gonna be down on it, they're just not gonna give you a copy. And yeah. And yeah, normally those news outlets will say we didn't get a copy. Um by yeah, they will. Yeah. And yeah, it's not even so. related to this, but the, uh, the other fucked up thing they're doing now is they like they don't launch parts of the game for like a month after launch. Like all the DLC stuff doesn't right. show up until yeah. all the reviews yeah. are out. So nobody fucking gets a chance to put that in their original review. But then how <laughs> yeah, much of this the, issue the too... transaction store isn't out yet. <laughs> how much of this issue too is just other streamers bitter that they weren't chosen to be one of those early streamers getting the extra 10,000 viewers too. Well, I think yeah. that's I think that's actually a reasonable kind of criticism to have because it means that the people who are at the top, it's manufactured popularity. It's not just like organic popularity. It's like, oh, well, this person out of this five people, let's say this is a made up number, but this five people who have this early access, I'm going to check out one of those because they're the only ones that have it yeah. instead of it being, you know, an organic rise to the top. Yeah, totally. And it, it, that's the right way to put it is that uh, they choose some really big streamers like Shroud and otherwise, like that will instantly rocket your um, number up. It will just generate right. inorganic interest about it and make it, you're going to get over 100,000 just by giving the biggest streamers um, that early access. So it makes it look good. And yeah, I mean, they know that that's their job. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, like Perfect World, of course, everybody would get it at the same time. And also that puts the consumer in a situation where they now have to wait two to four weeks of big games like for the review um it, that's the perfect world by the way is uh, <laughs> i think right you you wouldn't want any early access for anybody you wait till it's out wait till the final patches are in the servers are stable you witness it and in the real wild and get a real review but i do i personally as a consumer do want reviewers to have early access so when it comes out i know if i should buy it or not right but yeah. that's what i'm saying yeah. is like there <laughs> you have to at a minimum yeah um, with the review system anyways, like if you want to review and uh, some buyer buyer's guidance, um, you know, you got to have early access. But yeah, when you extend it to non-journalists, content creators, I mean, you're 100% right. It gets super messy because what are their standards and practices? Honestly, now that you bring it up, that's a good to do for a content creator. I, I don't have any. I'm like, you should list your standards and practices somewhere. Like, that's a great way to like, at, the, at a minimum, you can point. Like, God, if you're wondering, these are what I do for my standards and practices. I am for sale. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say whatever you pay me to say. Just saying. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, as long as you disclose, you're good. And you're like, guys, I told you that I might be lying. You didn't read. No, no, thing. I'm just going to say, hey, they paid me it's to say, fault. I love this game. <laughs> so good. Uh, <laughs> perfect. I'm going to go take a ride in my Ferrari. I'll be right back. Oh, yeah. That's how, that's how Ferrari Fridays happened. 
Yeah, now it's uh, it's it's definitely it's definitely interesting. Of course, you can never say either way whether someone's giving glowing reviews because they want the relationship to stay good or not. And so I would say on the consumer side, just just especially for a stream, you have you are watching like the entire game. So just watch the game and judge by yourself and not be swayed by what people are saying when they're streaming the game. And same thing goes with reviews. Like we've said before, like go to someone who you generally agree with or like the same things as or listen to the issues that they're noting that mean something to you. Yeah, this issue is know, so murky and the human to. brain is so broken that the reviewer might not know that they are being influenced. You know, totally. like they, they're yeah. coming into this with an open and honest heart. They don't realize that like all these tchotchkes and like the the free access, it did influence them and they don't even realize it. Yeah. Well, I mean, take a recent example, right? Like Bungie um, had the uh, sponsorship and Bungie creator program to um, stream the final shape reveal. So there's quite a few people participated in, including myself, full disclosure, right? So I got paid to watch that. So again, like even when that, two hours is over, that's what we're talking about. How do you know that I'm not still worried about the next one? And right, but that's what, yeah. with, with Watts, what she just said, right? You have to know who you're listening to, yeah. understand in the long game and like get a variety of opinions too. Don't just listen to one person in this example. Don't Definitely. just listen to me. Go <laughs> compare it to other people. Don't because, listen to me. But it's true. I get so tired yeah. of like people talking about, well, this review is wrong. This is, I'm like, you should be listening to like five reviews. Comparing. You're never going to run a Ferrari this way. And you, <laughs> and you got to know who the That's author is. That's what I is. do. I like, I'm normally check out, like like you said, it's about five different video reviews from people to see what they're all saying about it and pull everything together. And I'm like, okay, well, what's important for me in a video game? Well, like three of these people said that this was pretty bad. So then that makes me go, okay, well, maybe I should look into it a bit more. Yep. And in the end of the day, nobody's, you're never going to feel exactly the same way as somebody else. But um, yeah, you might find some people who hit on the right topics. Um, I actually yeah. always put it that I, I like, I, let me put it this way. I dislike that people always say, find a reviewer um, that agrees with everything, right? You, you, you want, but it, that's an easy way to do it, but I like to find reviewers that sometimes I disagree with, but I completely understand why they don't like those things. Right. And that's the yeah. important part. I'm like, yeah, like Watts for a perfect example. Like she, clearly I like Starfield more than her. But she took, I know why. Like, <laughs> and that's super valuable to me. It gives me yeah. such an interesting perspective. And like, that's what I want from reviews, not to just agree with them. So thank you, Watts. Yeah, that was a great topic. <laughs> <laughs> Be vigilant, gamers. Do your vigilance. And maybe if, a, I could... maybe if a game's coming out on console and PC and every single review is on PC and you haven't heard a word about what the console version's like. Maybe yeah, wait. or vice versa. A little bit goes both ways. Yeah, true. Yeah, maybe, maybe a wait. This here seems to be going more in the other direction, right? The console wait. version is all good, and the PC version is terrible. Except for Lies of P, baby. Yeah, you play that on the Steam Deck. Sixty FPS runs perfectly. Boy. Yep. You're 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 selling me on this game. I haven't played a Souls like since uh, Demon Souls Elden Ring? on the PS. Oh. oh well, yeah, I guess that counts. Does it count? Do you think it counts? You played Elden. Elden? Yeah, I played Elden Ring. Yeah, it's a Souls game. Yeah, it's a, it's a ring game, a ring based game. But it's not. It, okay, okay, so I haven't played one since Elden Ring, and I, I, I I'm starting <laughs> to whet my appetite for another one. Yeah, I did. I actually put out a video today about what makes Lies of P unique, because obviously this genre has skyrocketed with how popular it is and how many games are coming out that are in the Souls like family. So I figured I'd go into what Liza P is kind of doing differently, what makes it unique and what makes it not just like, oh, it's another Souls-like to play. So if you're a fan of them, then it's going to be great. But if you're not a fan or you're a little burnt out, then you don't want to. But mm. yeah, so I, I talked, went into the weapon system because that's super interesting. Like you can take the head of any weapon and the handle of any weapon and smush them together. Yeah, it changes neat. how it scales. It changes the move sets. It changes a bunch of stuff. Um, the story that they're doing is really cool because the way that you choose to lie or tell the truth will affect the endings of the game, side quests, uh, some rewards that you get. I think uh, like a good example was in the demo where 
you went to find a woman's baby. She's like, please find my baby and bring it back to me. And when you find it, it's a puppet, uh, not a wait, human. Was it always a puppet? I don't know. It's for sure. Mm. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> this can but get it's a grim. puppet now. <laughs> yes. So you bring the baby and you have the choice of being like, yeah, this is a beautiful baby. Or being like, that's a puppet, ma'am. <laughs> and if you uh, if you lie, well, first of all, it, it Which it's one is the lie? <laughs> That's a cute baby. Um, That's always a lie. If you lie, it it actually ch changes you to become more human because, you know, that's the story of Pinocchio, right, is that other puppets can't lie, whereas humans can lie. So the more you lie, the more human you become. But then you also get different rewards. You get a, a track called Feel If You Lie. And you can actually take that record to the hotel and play the entire song. And the song is really quite emotional and i thought it was really interesting that it's called feel you're lying you're becoming more human and you're starting to you know maybe feel emotions which is it puppets by creed can't. sounds like a creed song <laughs> no i think it was like a youtube song that they remixed and oh, really? ended up using it and putting it in the game That's yeah it's fun. and the song is really good really 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 good so and i love that you can just take a song and play it in your hub just the entire thing it's kind of a cool mechanic. So cool. yeah, if you if you lied, you get that. But if you tell the truth, you get a different thing. So I want to play the game multiple times to see what lying and telling the truth does. What happens when you lie the whole way? Do you become a human? Like what what's going on with that? Become a real boy. You can become a real boy. I'm a real boy. Finally kill that cricket. You don't kill the cricket. <laughs> and they call him Jamini Cricket. Oh, it's a different cricket. Jamini. Jimini. I mean, well, maybe that's how have... you're supposed to say it in Italian. I don't know. Frank, Jimini. Is that yeah. is Jimini better than Jimini? How, Gemin <laughs> how do you spell it? But uh, also, it, well, you spell I it think... like Gemini. Yeah, mm. but the, but actually, a Jimini Cricket is a, like a trademark. You know, they can't. Jimini. Right? Like oh. they can't even. Well, that's there's why no they're... Oh, is Jimini right? Cricket like a P. Disney? Oh yeah. Thing? Oh, you can't. So that's say, not in the real book. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's trademark. You can't even on like television be like. Jimmy Cricket, like you can't put it in your but dialogue. But they have Geppetto. Without... But is yeah, Geppetto from Geppetto. the book? And maybe Jiminy Cricket is not. But Geppetto's from the a name. Book? Geppetto's a name, and you I can't, think you so can't trademark Jiminy. a name. <laughs> I don't know that Jiminy Cricket. But you can call him Jimmy is... Cricket. <laughs> Jimmy, <Hello>. Gemini. <laughs> this Gemini is my best cricket. friend, Jimmy Cricket. He's cool. Jim, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's James Cricket. <laughs> They did take the character Antonio. I don't remember if they were in the Disney or the book, and then they made her a woman and kind of changed her name. She maybe it's if you domain fun now. fact, if you've watched uh, Ted Lasso, the woman who owns the bar in Ted Lasso, she's the woman in Liza P. Oh really? Oh really? Uh, she yeah. was one of my favorites. I love that. Show. Yeah, I love her. I was like that's great. Or if you're British, she's also in EastEnders. She was in a lot Actually, of EastEnders maybe Jimmy episodes. Trick. I might have misspoken that Jimmy Cricket is now. I don't know if it's public domain. I now think or not, that's anyway. why we're starting to see. We saw like the Winnie the Pooh horror movie, right? Because the trademarks come to the end, so now people could just go crazy. Yeah, I don't know. It's comp, but we know Disney's yeah. litigious, which was that was why it was the first thing I thought of. But anyway, yeah, they're doing a lot of things Gemini. that are quite unique because in general, in Souls games, you don't have like dialogue options that affect, you know, how the story ends. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I kind of like that they're doing that. It's mostly like moaning it. in Dark Souls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to see what it's going to be like. Because, yeah, based on that one side quest that you got in the demo, I was like, this is kind of emotional. All right. I wonder what they're going to do with the whole becoming human or being a puppet thing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading chat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Should we wrap this one up? Is that it? Okay. Anything else we want to talk about? I'm so excited for Liza P. Yeah. Save it for next week. Yeah. I think so, I'm, I think yeah, I'm going to sure. start next playing week, that. I will be talking about it. It comes out on Saturday, but it's early access. But for it, early access. How much is early access? It's $10 more, so it's 70 total. Fran, am I allowed to get early access on this one? On the oh, Fran scale of corruption. Early copy. So I'm can gonna, I get early early access? I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, if they twice. give me early if, access, I guarantee a ten out of ten. I'm just saying. 
<laughs> That's right. If, Watts if you give me early access, buys, I'll talk about it. <laughs> Watts is buying early access, therefore gaining an advantage on Twitch. Can you trust her opinion wow. in chat? Wow. Go I literally paying for views playing. on Twitch. <laughs> literally paying for views. <laughs> Please go watch Watts stream on Saturday and say literally paying for views <laughs> until you get banned, by the yeah, way. This will only banned. be funny to her for about two seconds. <laughs> See, Mighty Turnip said, I'll allow it. Not a massive publisher, not a massive game studio. It's their first yeah. ever game. No. Nah, no, I'm excited about it, too. Yeah, it looks good. Dope. I, uh, yeah. I might, I, might, I might be with you. I might just download and it they, on Saturday. They said that they've... They've like, they, so they have a lot of the original elements from the Pinocchio story, but they're kind of uh, reimagining the story to be dark and mysterious. And I'm like, the original Pinocchio has slavery, like a, abuse, kidnapping. They hung really? Pinocchio. They hung him. So yeah, yeah are, we going, are we going darker <laughs> than that? It wouldn't we'll with a souls like. It wouldn't surprise me if they. That's what I'm it. saying. I want all fairy tales to be souls like now. I well, want souls like versions. A lot of fairy tales, tales are up. pretty like dark, right? They're terrible. Before they got Disney fied, like the yeah. grim fairy tales, like they were all like really kind of horrific. Really bad. Maybe I could be I could be Little Red Rod Riding Hood. Mm -hmm. Fighting yeah. all the wolves and stuff. Dude, yeah, one of my yeah. favorite yeah. Dark Souls characters too. Oh yeah, a great Souls like problem. That's true. Fighting your way to freedom. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> Ending on a high note. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll see you next week. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us. Uh, oh, I'm, real quick, I want to I want to plug the special we got coming up on Thursday. We're doing the. Yeah. Uh, like kind of the the RPG. Uh, that what do you call it? And dragons. Des Dungeons and Dragons, but with Destiny but, instead of yeah. You know, Dungeons and Dragons. It's gonna be <laughs> a lot of fun. Uh, you know, if of course we're gonna make it stupid because that's just our style. <laughs> it should be a lot yep. of fun. Tune in live. I do think I'm gonna be able to post that uh, on the on the uh, YouTube and on the podcast as well. I'm sure you're gonna want to watch it though too because it should be. You know, you're going to want to see us be idiots, right? It's going to be a good time. Yeah. And then if you're interested in finding it more out about Liza P, you can check out the video I put on YouTube. Please leave a yes. taint comment. I'll take some taints. Like Mylan takes taints. Literally paying for views. That's the comment. Literally taint, paying for taints. <laughs> paying for leave, taints. Paying for taints. <laughs> leave that comment <laughs> on the video. And then I'll know you are a tainter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you all. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Jimmy.